I don't know if you read this, but they've got a morning after pill for men now, and it's a little bit different than you ladies take. Apparently, if the girl gets pregnant, then you take it. And it changes your blood group. <laughs> Five out of every three people can't do fractions. That is too subtle for one in a minute, really. And uh, one in ten people are dyslexic, which is true. I've got a friend of mine who's dyslexic. I was in the kitchen with him the other day. I said, can you smell gas? He said, I can't even smell my own name. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, um, i tell you what I'm going to do. Because I do a little bit something visual, I'm going to show you. And you can probably tell by my accent, I am a Londoner, uh, from a little village just outside London called White Chapelle. Do you know it? <laughs> now, as I do this, some of the older people, some of the more senior people, will look at this and think, my God, that brings back a few memories. And uh, I remember my old mum doing this. And uh, where are you from, sir? Can I ask uh, the gentleman at the front there? Can I ask where you're from? That was very clever, sir. I was talking to you, and that was very, very clever. Now, I've worked with the best ventriloquist in the world. Now, that was really clever. And I can tell you, because I'm in show business, you've got a gimmick there, you've got the dummy drinking while you're talking now. That is very unusual. Where are you from, did you say? Morton. Wallingham. Morton. Morden. Yeah, that's it. No, no, it's all right. I'm not immigration, I'm just a cabaret. I mean, you ain't got to worry, man. Yeah. Of course, and, and the gentleman at the front there, is that your wife you're with or your nurse? Is that? <laughs> my daughter. Yeah, all right, sir. It's not an interview. It's just a sort of like a bit of stand up there. Where are you from? Can I be, can I be inquisitive? Limpsfield. Limpsfield. Yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, in Limpsfield, they used to hang it in the outhouse. You come to Wallingham, they call it the wash house. But then I come from the centre of London, and we'll call it the shed. But those days were. Right. Tell you what, I do lean gentlemen on our little lovely showcase, and I'm going to pull little pieces of today's newspaper together. Then I'm going to give the paper a little flick. Now, as I flick and as I concentrate, I can actually restore that paper to its former glory. Now, every single page is restored, inside and outside. Yeah. Oh, no. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to do something of that sort of like... Uh, it took me about five years to be able to do that, and uh, you really made it worthwhile. <laughs> there are two... You know, two ways of doing comedy and magic, one with applause and laughter, and the way we're doing it. Because <laughs> I'm, you know, as I said, I'm getting on a bit. I've been in the business a long time, and, uh, and uh, you know, we've got some distinguished guests. And uh, are you a retired man, or are you still working, sir? Still working. Still working. What was your, what's your line of country? What do you do, can I ask? I'm in advertising. You're in advertising. What, you walk along with the big boards, do you? <laughs> end is nigh. You doing the end is nigh? Because you're at the age, aren't you? I'm not going to be morbid here, but someone said to me the other night, they said, Mike, what would you like someone to say at your funeral? And I thought this is going to be a wind-up in this club. And I did think about that, and I thought, I'd like someone to say at my funeral... Hold on, he's moving. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, now, as I said, because it is uh, really building up, and, uh, and uh, the gentleman there, can I ask where you're from? Can I be inquisitive, sir? Uh, Shirley. Yeah, and is that before the sex change, or is that right now? Uh, what was your name before you were Shirley, then? Robert. Oh, Robert. Lovely. I can see you doing well, Robert. Now, look, I'll tell you what we'll do. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in this room tonight, and uh, look at the lovely bar staff up there in the, uh, in the Botley Hill Farm Hotel. Lovely people at the bar. The barman there. He's a little bit nervous, uh, but then I'll be if I was stealing. But he's a lovely fella. Now... What do you, what's your line of country, sir? What do you do for a living? Can I ask? Can I be inquisitive? Banking. Banking? All right. I'll talk a bit slower then. <laughs> of course, I've got enough money to last me the rest of my life. Well, that's unless I buy something. <laughs> now, any card players in the room tonight? Any card players in the room tonight? Now, before we do this, the lovely lady sitting in the front, just give us a noise like a cow, lovely lady. Just give us a noise like a cow. Come on. Are you serious? I am serious. Yes, I am serious. Oh, that'll do. Lovely German with your wife, your lovely wife, give us a noise like a dog. And the lovely lady on the end there, give us a noise like a duck. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Paul McKenna, the hypnotist, takes an hour and three quarters to be able to do that. <laughs> okay. 
Now, what we're going to do is, as I said, tonight in the room there, and the gentleman there, uh, do you play cards? Are you a card player? Because look, uh, this is an ordinary pack of trick cards. These cards cannot be shuffled. They cannot be examined, but otherwise an ordinary pack, all right? I'll show you that again. I know a lot, a lot of people are like, look at that. I'll do it once more. Oh, shit. That's all right. I'll, I'll take it there. And I'll do it on the cabaret floor. We'll do it cabaret style. Look at that. Do you know, I did that three times. You didn't flinch at all. So what do you do believe in? What, your police horse? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'll go back up to the dais, and um, I'll tell you what, the, the gentleman there, to ask you, I want you to think of any card. You're in the bank, and you work for a particular bank, can I ask? Can I be inquisitive? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you work behind the counter, don't you? What do you do in banking, can I ask? Uh, buy and sell loans. Buy and sell loans, do you? So you bought a few of your clients in, I can see that. And uh, I'll tell you what, you do. look, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try something very unusual tonight. What I want you to do, and can I ask the first name again? Can I just be... Robert. Robert. Before you were Shirley, okay? Now, Robert, yeah. I want you to think of any card in the pack. Just think of a card, okay? Yeah. Now, you're a banker. Just clear your mind. Shit, that was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> Have you got a card in your mind there? Yeah. You've got a card in your mind, all right. Young Robert, got lovely young Robert here with us, ladies and gentlemen. And what I want you to do, I want you just to concentrate on that card, okay? You got it in your mind? Well, this appeals to me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Robert, this would be a great trick. If the card you're thinking of is this one, wouldn't it? Robert, for the first time, this is not a fix. Shout out the card you're thinking of. Six of diamonds. Six of diamonds. Correct. Would you like to see another one? <laughs> and you had the choice from any of these, didn't you, Robert? I mean, you had the choice from any of these. And uh, you could have chosen the... Right, well, this has got the six of clubs here. But I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, because this is a very special night here, near Warningham, on a Monday night. Now, what I, what I did, I took a card out of the deck, and I tell you what, I sealed it in an envelope before I come up onto the stage here. Robert, come up and join me for a couple of minutes. Give me a nice round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Robert, lovely. Shirley? Oh, lovely. Only at the weekends. Only at the weekends, is it? You, you just come sort of in disguise tonight, did you? And uh, you're a banker, are you? You are a banker. Just. Just move your legs, that's it, and your body will follow automatically. Just step over there. <laughs> lovely. And, uh, and you're with your lovely lady, I can see. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Robert, the card you actually thought of was? Six of diamonds. Six of diamonds. Now, I couldn't have possibly known that, could I? Right. I'll tell you what I did. Inside here, inside this envelope, and uh, is one playing card that I sealed down before I come out on stage tonight in front of this lovely, august crowd. Now card you thought of, six of diamonds, no funny business, I'm going to play, ask you to just place your fingers in there, just get that card out, have a look at it, Robert, just show the ladies and gentlemen, six of diamonds. Now, good trick, isn't it? See, now that's a typical British audience, because when I work to the Americans, you know what the Americans are like, they're so gullible, they think I've got some kind of supernatural power. But because we're all Brits here, you think, shit, he's got 52 wallets. <laughs> because that's the way we are, isn't it? I mean, do you remember about 18 months ago, a guy called David Blaine came over to London. Do you remember him? David Blaine, this American magician. Do you remember him, Robert? Yeah, got the box. Yeah? You got the story then. Yeah. Lovely. What was that, a film or a book? Now, oh, lovely, same lodge, good man. Now, he came over, this David Blaine, he came over... And he said to us British, he said, look what I'm going to do. And you're right, he got in that, remember that plastic box, that big plastic box, clear box. And he said to us Brits, he said, I'm going to be, I'm going to stay in there. I'm going to be hoisted up over, Tower uh, over River Thames by the Tower Bridge. And I'm going to stay up there for 44 days and starve myself. Do you remember that? Let's face it, he knows nothing about us Brits because we don't give a damn if he dies, do we? In fact, if he said, I'm going to die on a certain day, we'd have all been down there, wouldn't we? Now... Robert, lovely Robert here. Look, I tell you what I'm going to do. I want you to uh, just, uh, we're going to do one more little thing because it's only a little short. It takes me a while to get going. Just take any card you like. All right, too late. And uh, lovely, I can see you work with your hands, you being a banker and that. And uh, yeah, take it out. As it, show it around, let everybody see it. Let all the people in the cheap seats have a little look up there. Lovely. He's doing shadow pictures of people on the wall, this fella. People say to me, do you produce an animal? Well, I did once. We live with his mother now. <laughs>
Lovely. I'll tell you what I want you to do. You can put that anywhere in the pack you like, put it there. <laughs> Lovely. I'm going to put it there like that. Look, Robert, and you're going to believe this. Your card is going to jump to the top of the pack. Remember your card? Little thing of a twist, your card jumps to the top of the pack. Look at that, eight of clubs. <laughs> well, I'd like to sing another song now. And uh, what was your card, Robert? Eight of hearts. Eight of hearts. We'll take that card, give it a spin. When it comes back, eight of hearts. How about it? Good trick, isn't it? Good trick. Of course, if you don't concentrate, it goes back to the eight of clubs. Do you want to play for money? Well, you might as well. You dress like you're losing. Do you want to play? These bankers make me laugh. All those big bonuses, he's got jeans and a 14-year-old jumper on. Oh, 15-year-old. You like it up here, don't you? Because you like to expose yourself a bit. I know what bankers are like. <laughs> but he's a lovely fellow. He's got a lovely smiley face. Like, are you working in the banking as well? You're a lovely lady. You're not with him in the bank. And did you buy him that jumper? Did you? That sweater? <laughs> it's a lovely sweater. He's a good fella. He's out with the rest of us. So have a nice night. Give him a lovely round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, sir. That's it. I tell you what, that's the first time we've ever seen a banker jump, isn't it? <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, as I said, we've only got short spots here, so there's a lot of things that I'd like to do but I can't do. Um, because we've only this short of, uh, we're, we're, we're running this short. But uh, I did get pulled on the way here by the local police and uh, the guy tapped on the window and I wound down the window. You know what the coppers are like? At my age, they always look so young. And the first thing he said to me, you've been drinking? I said, I've been drinking. He said, step out of the car. I thought, here we go. And I stepped out of the car and he looked at me and he said, here, are you staggering? And I looked at him and I said, well, you're quite nice looking in a, a sort of official kind of way yourself. <laughs> Didn't do me any good at all. Uh, how long have you been married, Robert, can I ask? 20 years. 20 years. Me and my wife, we've been married over 30 years and we're into oral sex at the moment. And she lays on the bed with her back to me and talks me out of it. <laughs> 